With so many new gun owners taking to the range with their first firearm, it's important to review the basic rules of firearm safety. Before we get into the rules, let's touch on a few elements that are important to talk about. The first element is a positive attitude. No matter how much firearms training you have, at some point, everyone started out at the same place, a blank slate. Every day, we get into our cars and drive them without a second thought. Cars are far more dangerous and complex than a firearm. In our cars, we take some basic safety precautions. We look both ways before pulling into traffic. We wear our seatbelt. We use our turn signal. Each of these safety precautions become second nature to us and we are able to operate our car without a great deal of thought. We can become just as comfortable with our firearms and by using some basic common sense and safety precautions, we can be safe gun owners. Also, know that this is not some kind of a mystic art. It's accessible to everyone and you can learn to be a safe firearms user. The second element is knowledge. Today, you will gain a little bit of knowledge by watching this video. If you take a firearms class from a knowledgeable and professional instructor, you'll increase your knowledge base. Be careful when collecting knowledge that you get it from a reputable source. Just because someone works as a police officer, a gun counter associate, or any other job that involves guns doesn't magically make them a source of good knowledge. Not to say that there are not some people in those positions who have good knowledge. Proper training in safe firearms handling makes someone knowledgeable. Look at all of the information you receive with a critical eye and compare it to known sources of good knowledge like information from the National Rifle Association or the National Shooting Sports Foundation. These organizations set the standards for firearm safety. And the last element is skill. Taking the positive attitude that you can learn and good quality knowledge and creating a regimen of practice will develop skill. We will do a future video on getting the most out of your practice to help develop skill. But the main thing to keep in mind is to practice safely and become familiar with your gun and how it operates. A great source of information on this is the manual that came with your gun. Read it and understand it before you try to practice with it. Now that we have the elements out of the way, let's look at the four basic rules of gun safety. The first rule, as Colonel Jeff Cooper stated it when he created the rules, is all guns are loaded. Now we know that sometimes a gun is loaded and sometimes it's not. What he meant by this is to always treat a gun as if it is loaded. Never assume a gun is unloaded and then treat it differently. Even when you verify that a gun is unloaded, still behave as if it is loaded and give it the respect that it deserves. The second rule is never let the muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy. Always be conscious of where your gun is pointed and never point it at another person, a pet, valuable items, or even a wall that may have people on the other side. I like to imagine that my gun is a laser that will destroy anything it points at. I'm acutely aware of where my gun is pointed at all times. It's also a good habit to get into if you're not handling a gun and you're just near someone who is. Watch where their muzzle points and never cross in front of the gun. A wise man once told me if you never stand in front of a gun, you'll never get shot. The third rule is to keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target and you have made the decision to fire. I like to take this rule a step farther and say keep your finger on the side of the frame until you're ready to pull the trigger. Essentially, your finger lives alongside the frame. Occasionally, when you're ready to shoot, your finger will travel to work, and once it's done, it immediately goes home. By learning to return our finger to the spot on the side of the frame of the gun, there's very little chance of accidentally activating the trigger. And the fourth rule is to be sure of your target and what is beyond it. This means that if you're shooting, you need to make sure that the bullet will be stopped before it strikes something that you don't intend to destroy. Paper targets don't stop a bullet. If you shoot over a berm at a shooting range, the bullet can go for a very long distance and hurt or kill someone. You should also not shoot at hard objects that can cause a bullet to deflect or ricochet and go in a direction other than the one you shot it. Before you shoot, know that it is a safe direction and please never fire a gun into the air. There's no way to predict where that bullet will come down. Now that we've covered the three elements and the four basic rules, there are a few other things to be aware of. First, always use the proper ammunition for your gun. Your manual can tell you if there are certain ammunitions that are not appropriate for your gun. Just because it fits doesn't mean that it is correct or safe. If your gun is a handgun, get a quality holster that properly fits. It should cover the trigger guard to prevent the trigger from accidentally being actuated. It should keep the gun contained without letting it fall out. It should also be a good fit so it doesn't have to be forced inside or allow the gun to wobble around. 
You will want to avoid anything hanging that can hit the trigger as you holster or unholster. Click here to see our video on holster selection. When holstering, it is especially important to make sure that your finger is outside of the trigger guard and that nothing like a stray piece of fired brass that can jam in the trigger has lodged in the holster. Always when practicing, make sure that you wear proper eye and ear protection. The sound waves of a gun firing can cause permanent hearing loss, tinnitus or ringing in the ears, and can stunt the development of hearing in young children. A bullet fragment, hot burning powder, or a chip of rock can hit you in the eye and cause permanent blindness. Start small and work your way up. New shooters are still learning how to control a firearm with proper grip. Jumping immediately into a large caliber gun that produces a lot of recoil before you've learned to properly hold that gun can cause serious injury. Start with smaller calibers like the 22 long rifle, and as you get more comfortable controlling it, work your way up to more powerful guns. Avoid shooting while impaired by alcohol or drugs. A few beers and a day of planking may sound like fun, but it can impair your judgment and your response time. Even some over-the-counter cold medications can cause impairment. Be aware that you may not only harm someone, but you can be criminally charged in some states for even being in possession of a firearm while you're impaired. Proper firearm storage is a huge safety concern. Every accidental death by firearm can be prevented. Securely storing your firearm so that it's not accessible to children or anyone who has not been instructed in safe firearms handling is of paramount importance. A gun safe, a gun lock, a locked case, or putting it into a drawer or a room that is locked can prevent an accidental injury or death. It is also advisable to store the ammunition separate from the gun. Become a knowledgeable gun user. Take some classes in basic gun safety like a hunter's education class, concealed carry class, or a first steps or basic pistol or rifle class from an NRA certified instructor. Even if you don't plan to hunt or carry a concealed weapon, these classes can provide formal safety training and also help you understand the basic functions of your gun and how to properly load, unload, cock, decock, and handle the gun in a safe manner. Being able to verify that a gun is unloaded is an essential skill. Another essential skill is being able to lock open the action of any type of gun that you may encounter. For a pistol, it's as simple as sliding the slide lock toward the top of the gun and then drawing back the slide until it engages and locks open. For a shotgun, pressing the action release and then sliding back the pump will open the action. For a revolver, pressing the cylinder release will allow the cylinder to flip out of the side. For a bolt action rifle, just rotate and pull back on the bolt. For a semi-auto rifle, pulling the charging handle while holding the bolt catch will lock the bolt to the rear. Being able to lock open the action is important so you can easily look into the chamber to ensure that the gun is unloaded and also for properly storing and transporting your firearm. And the last thing is to develop a safety mindset. Understand that guns are extremely dangerous, but with the right skill set and the right mindset, they can be used safely. Always be conscious of safety while using a gun and keep safety forefront in your mind as you practice. Every single person who is present where a gun is being handled is responsible for safety. Never be timid or afraid to call out someone for unsafe gun handling. Your safety is your responsibility and allowing unsafe behavior to continue jeopardizes everyone present. I cannot overemphasize the importance of proper training from a certified professional firearms instructor. No matter how much you know, you will learn something or at the very least have something reinforced in your skill set. And classes are a lot of fun. Be safe and enjoy the sport.